Hello everyone, if you're new to the channel, I'm an 11 year old who loves maths and is really passionate about it. Okay, let's get straight into it. Today we're going to be doing an intro to integral. We'll start with some simpler things, like really easy stuff, then we'll move on to the more difficult, maybe we'll move on to trigonometric um, calculus, and we'll cover some of the formulas. Okay, let's get right into this. Okay, so let's get into it. Intro to integral. Let's start with meaning of symbols. Okay, so this is quite a difficult one. I'll show you it more cle clearly since that was probably one of the worst. Yeah, no, more like, yeah, like that. Do you see that? When someone sees that, they always think, oh God, it's so difficult. But all it means is it denotes the process of integration or it can mean stands for sum or total. Okay, now let's get into, get into some of the easiest formulas. Okay, let's go over some basic formulas. These are really easy, so I mean, still do remember them, but don't forget we're going to get onto harder, more difficult formulas. I don't. This will be probably part one, since I think we'll only be able to cover a few trigonometric, trigonometric formulas, and we'll only be able to do a few questions on that. And then we'll go on to some really difficult. This will be into, this will be quite a long series since this is a few years of worth of material which I can put down into about a few hours worth. Okay, so let's get into this. Here's the power rule. X to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. We can use this if we have integral sign and it's x squared or anything. So we can put it into the formula x squared. So x to the power of n plus 1, so it's 2 plus 1, x cubed, divided by 3, because it's n plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3, and plus c. Plus c isn't that important, so don't worry about it, but do put it in if you ever have a question that ever needs you to use the power rule. Don't forget to put plus c in. Just it's Although it's not important, you can lose marks on it. And now let's do the definite integral formula. This is really important that you don't forget at all. Because if you forget it, it's it's so important that some people even call it the fundamental calculus theorem. Okay, here. If we have um, integration symbol from A to B, F of X, DX, that is equal to F of B minus F of A. We'll be explaining that, we'll be explaining that in about 20 seconds. So hang tight. Okay, now let us evaluate this this question, sorry, using both the definite integral formula and the power rule. Okay, so this is quite a simple question. You're not going to get this on the A-levels for those of you who came for A-level question maths. Okay, so let's start. First, we have to use this part of the function, this part of, well the equation 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 and we have to apply the power rule for everything also don't forget well you should know this if if you ever have um x if you ever have one then that just means x okay so let's stop so the power rule if you remember is x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c but we don't have to worry about c for now you, you don't have you can use it but it's only for indefinite integrals we're doing definite integrals okay so we have to use the power for 3x squared it's 3x cubed since it's 2 plus 1 and then we can divide it by 3 the threes cancel out sorry yeah the threes cancel out so it's just x cubed okay so the integral of um so the antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed okay so now we have to add 2x but 2x is just x squared since if you find the derivative it, x of x squared it's 2x since the derivative rule is n equals n x to the power of n equals n x to the power of n minus 1 so it's just 2x 
that I knew by heart, so it's kind of a memory thing. But you, ca there is another way to solve it, but x cubed plus x squared. Then, 1, I told you before it was x. So, the f of x part of the big rule called the definite integral formula, we found out the function part. So, now, it states that we have to find what... Z um, 0 and 2 if we substitute that into x and we'll and then we'll find them and subtract them from each other so quickly we find out that 0 is just 0 because none of this so it's so it's now we need to find what b is so 2 at 2 cubed is 8 plus 2 squared is 4 plus x 2 which is 2 and that will equal 14 hopefully you got that so it's 14 minus 0 which equals 0 so now sorry which equals 14 that is probably the stupidest thing i've ever said so now we found out that this equation equals 14 now let's assume that the area under the curve is measured in centimeters then this would have been centimeters squared. We are going to be talking about formulas for fun for calculus and integral questions that involve trigonometric trigonometric values or whatever they call it. That it involve trigonometry. So, for example, questions like this: integral of zero to pi divided by two, cos x dx. So, what we'll do is. What we'll do is we'll find out what these formulas mean. So here we have to find, so if we have the integral of cos x dx, that is equal to sin x plus c, okay? So if you ever see cos of x or of any number, that just means sin of that and pat plus c, but we don't need that for now. Now, if we have integral of sin x dx, it's equal to negative cos x plus c. So no matter what, if you see sin x, you can find the integral, which is negative cos x plus c, but we don't need plus c. Okay, so now that you know it, we're going to be attempting some questions, like this question and this question. Perfect. So now we're going to do what is perceived to be the impossible by most people. We are going to find... We're going to evaluate this question, okay? So from zero integral... From 0 to pi divided by 2, we're going to find the area under the curve of 0 divided by pi 2 of cos x dx. So first what we're going to do is we're going to use to lies this formula, okay? Which I've already talked about. So cos x dx equals sin x plus c. So what this means is it's, we have cosine here to get the antiderivative or to get the integral. We have to change cos to sine. So with the revised um, with the revised equation we have pi divided by 2, 0, cos x, sorry, sine x, x, dx. Okay, and now that we have that, we can put in the values to our calculator. So sine of pi divided by 2 is actually equal to 1. And the sine of 0 is equal to 0. So since we have our formula quite a while back here, we still have to use this formula. And we have FB and FA. So we have to subtract 1 from 0 since we found out pi divided by 2 is equal um, the sine of pi divided by 2 is equal to 1, minus the sine of 0, which is equal to 0. Since we use the formula f of a, minus f of b, which we already have, we both have both values. And the answer is 1. So we've solved this almost impossible question. Well, obviously, it's not impossible, but uh, it's quite difficult to someone who's never done calculus before. And think about how proud of yourself you should be because you just did calculus. Well done. Okay, now let's do the second question. Integral from 0 to pi, sine x dx. 
So from here, we know that if we ever have sine x, we can just replace it for negative cos x. And we don't need the plus c for now, since we don't need it for now. Just later on, we might need it. So now we have this equation. So all we need to do is put, put it into our calculator. So negative cos of x of pi, so, sorry, negative cos of pi is 1, since cos of pi is just negative 1. And cos of 0 is 1, but since it's negative cos of 0, it's negative 1. So we have 1 minus minus 1. But since it's 1 minus minus 1, that's just 1 plus 1. So we get 2, as I've done here. So you should have got that. If you didn't, don't forget you might have used the wrong measurement since there's degrees and radians. Check on your calculator. And if you want to know why we do, why we subtracted one from one, it's because of this rule, as I've showed before. And for the other one, it's f of b minus f of a, and the function was just negative cos of x after we integrated it. So we got two. Well done, guys. This is all for today. Hopefully, you learned something, and please subscribe. No, no pressure, of course. Okay, see you next part. This is just part one. We still we have still have a lot of material to cover, but hopefully you now know how to um, first of all use the power rule and the um, fundamental um, the fundamental rule for calculus. You should also probably have learnt the, all the formulas for um, some of the trigonometry. Uh, you should have learnt the two formulas for trigonometry and you should have learned when to use them. And probably you should be quite strong on that. If you're not, um, check out a link I have in the comments. It goes to a channel which really is helpful. Okay, see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.